Daytona Beach, Florida is four hours north of Miami, but it's a totally different animal. You come up here, it's a different pace, different kind of buyers, different kind of sellers. I'll ship a truckload of cars up here and lickety split. I'll come back with a whole truckload of different cars. I'm able to exchange cars that are older in my inventory for different cars. And it's a wonderful system. You got guys that come up here strictly to trade. They don't even want money. They want to bring a different car home. I've been coming to Daytona now over 20 years. And my lemons over here are parked right next to the lemonade stand. We got the team in the car and we're on the run. We know what it takes to be number one. And we'll be riding high when the day is done. We're just out here having fun. I've been buying, selling, and trading classic cars for over 40 years. Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. You could call it work, but for my team, it's a whole lot more. I'm Ted Vernon, and this is my place, South Beach Classics. Woo! I've been coming here for over 20 years, and I love it. I'll be back again and again. They treat you right here, to, very organized, and they get the people here that want to trade. I'm a trader. We don't want to go home with what we brought. We got to pay shipping both ways. So you try to make one go away, get something different. Hey, Troy, what's up, man? What do you say, Ted? How you doing? How you doing, buddy? So what you got on the little Jeep? I've been asking 14.5. What do you got for me? I got a 58 Edsel police car. Well, that's close. Let's look at that. Let's take a look at it. Me and Ted has done several deals. I have eight cars here. He's interested in several of them. I think he wants my Edsel or my Chevelle. I'm not sure yet. I'd love to relieve Ted from some of his cash today. It's that's really funny looking, isn't it? It has all new interior, all new engine. What engine is it? Original 312, all new. Runs good? Runs the best. The Edsel's a rare, non-desirable car. Unless you get a convertible, then you got something. I think in hard money, the Edsel's worth from five to seven grand. That's the end of it. I know that if I give them one of them cars, I gotta come up with some difference, and I'm willing to do that. But it's gotta make sense. Well, let's make a trade on something. What are we trading on today? My Aztec? No, I'm not into that. It's too new. Grand Marquis, that's excellent. Cold air, beautiful interior, runs up and down the road, and I gotta come your way a little bit, I will. Ted. Just get to the bottom line. What do you think? Five grand. You're out of your mind. That's all that car's worth. You don't get free cars. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> I think the Edsel will do good here today. I don't know, but I'd give you two grand. No. Uh, what else can we do? A van I drove up in, which is perfect. That goes on your lot. You'll turn it right around. Oh, it's early. Maybe we can kick up something before the show's over. Troy must have made a lot of money because he ain't budging. He's too tough. Uh, we ain't able to work out nothing yet. He's being tight today. It's early. You're trying to steal my Edsel, Ted. There's no stealing from you, Troy. You know what you got? You're a smart guy. I have a 10 or 12 grand Edsel, so let's make a deal. You got a five or six grand Edsel. You don't have a 10 or 12 grand Edsel. That's got too many doors. The cop you know? cars all have four doors. Yeah, but that ain't a cop car. So don't it worry is about now. It. It, it is now. <laughs> you got an answer for everything. Yeah. Let's try and get something done. Well, how much do you want to give me in the minivan? So I'll give you 2,500 bucks. I can't do that to you. We're I too think far. you should. How could you say we're too far away? Because we are. That's $4,500 minivan. That's what they sell for all day long. Take five grand and we'll get it done. You're crazy. You're just crazy. You know, you really are nuts. I'm worried about you. I'm really worried about you. I'm worried about you, Ted. He wanted my car for free, because his car's only worth five to seven grand, and he hit me at that kind of money, plus my car. Right now, it's not making sense. Probably ain't gonna be able to work a deal on that, so we'll see where it goes. Maybe we'll work out something later today or something. I got my eye on a 944 Porsche a guy's got. It's not exactly a high-line Porsche, but it's better than a soccer mom van. If I could trade on my van, I'm gonna be so happy. I love the van, it runs great, but it's not what I sell. Tick came by and he saw my 944. I think he likes it. My dad happened to blow up his van on Wednesday, so maybe we can make a deal with a van that he's got there, but uh, the money's gotta be right. We'll see, we'll see what he can come up with. If we make a deal today with Ted, maybe I'll treat him for dinner at the restaurant too. I do a little bit of car selling here and there on the side. Uh, but my uh, main source of income is my restaurant. I have heard he likes Italian food. Uh, not so much the Italian cars, but I do know he likes the food. So this is the car, Frank? Ah, uh, you made it back. Well, you told Ted, me. Ted, how you been? Good. So what can you tell me about this? Well, I picked up this beautiful 944 from one of my customers down in uh, Port St. Lucie. It's just a beautiful car. It's been sitting in a warehouse for a couple of years, and uh, she needed to liquidate some of her vehicles, and 
I was the lucky one to end up with it. We got a nice uh, 1987 uh, Porsche 944 here. It's not one of the more desirable Porsches that they make, but it is a beautiful car. It's a one owner car and uh, the interior is immaculate and it runs great, cold AC. It's a really nice car. And if, and if we make this deal, he's gonna get himself a, a heck of a car. And so you mentioned that your dad had blown up his van. He did. He blew, he blew up his van on Wednesday, and he, just, he doesn't want to let the thing go. He's been holding on to this thing since 1992. I have and, the solution. Uh, I drove up here in a minivan. Come here. Show it to you. All right, let's check it out. If his dad's van hadn't blown up, he wouldn't go near that car. I know him. He's a race car driver. He would not be driving the Sakamon van, but I'm in luck. His dad's car blew up. It works for me. It's an amazingly good van. The air is ice cold, the radio works, goes down the road 100%. All right, it's great. So you can speed with it. That's great. But we're going to be trading in a 944 for a minivan. 944 is maybe the worst Porsche they ever made. And it's an 87. The 89s are good. And you know that. You're right. You're and right. I know I'm going to have to come your way a little bit. Now, you want 6900 for that. And I would like to get 4500 for mine, which makes like 2500 I'd have to give you? Come on, I can't drive. Uh, my wife will kill me if I show up at home with this thing. This now, if I show up home with this and some cash, then she's going to be OK with well, it. Well, 2500 bucks. Yeah, it's going to have. To, it's going to take a little bit more than that, Tim. I think Frank has the car underpriced. I think it'll do 8500 anywhere. And I think I'm really comfortable at four or less. Anything over four, I'm out. You know, Frank's hanging around, so I think he's serious about doing a deal. My gut is that it's gonna happen. You know, he's at 2,500 bucks. Realistically, I think if he came up with four grand cash, I think maybe we can make that happen. I understand that the Porsche is not a 911, I get it, but the thing is beautiful, the interior is beautiful, and I'm gonna go home with a, a minivan. I gotta wrap my mind around that. So, you know, it's gonna be a little bit easier if I can wrap it in $100 bills. Hopefully uh, he can come up with the price a little bit and get to somewhere where I'm, I'm happy and he's happy, where he can make money and I can go home and make my wife happy. Listen, Frankie, I'll go 3,500. Killing me, man, come on, it's enough. Give me four grand and we'll call it even. Wow. Come on, you know it's worth it. About four grand and dinner Sunday night. Done deal. Done. Thank That's you. gonna be the fun of it. You got scongeal? Yeah, I'm scongeal. I got, I got calamar, I got uh, calzones, I uh, got marigotti, I got all that stuff. Uh, I'm in. You know, the dinner wasn't a big deal. I was probably gonna invite him over for dinner anyway. Either way, it's a win-win situation. I'm happy. Dad's getting a new van. My wife's getting a stack of $100 bills. We're all good. You know, I had to go to the four grand to get Frank to say yes, and I'm happy. I wanted the van to be gone, and I wanted the Porsche to come home with me. It all works, I'll be fine. I will make something. And I've got a dinner Sunday night. Frank said he's gonna cook for me personally. You can't ask for more than that. He's a great guy. I'm walking back here at the car show in Daytona, and I saw Black Beauty, the Green Hornet car. Blew me away. This is uh, my beauty, the Black Beauty. This is a 1966 Imperial Crown. Dean Jeffries built two cars. This that you see in front of you is the second of the two cars. Both were used on the show, except this one only appeared that we know for sure in uh, a two-part episode where they had a good Green Hornet followed by a bad Green Hornet. Does it start? Yep, starts, runs. Everything's functional. Would you consider selling this car? Not at this point. Uh, I'm kind of saving it for my daughter for her inheritance. I mean, like a hundred grand type of a number? Well, I think I'd have to pass on that. It's kind of hard to say what the real value of the car would be. Having based it upon the sale of the number one car, which is the sister car to this one, that car is not quite as accurate as this one is. That sold for 192000 and I would have to say that it would be in excess of that for this. I offered him $100,000. I figured he'd sell the car. And he politely told me, no. It's tough to buy a car when people are in love with it. Take 110000 call it a day. Nah, it's really the love of the car, the love of the series, and... I can understand that, and I appreciate you showing me the car. I'm over in the spots in the car corral with a check if you want to sell it. <laughs> Will do. Let's roll, Kato. There you go. Thanks again, man. Oh, you're back today. 
said. Big guy. Have you done any trading? I see the, Ed the Edsel's gone. Yep, I got the 63 Impala. That's more me. It could be you. What about this the just, wagon here? This I just got also, 65 Chevelle wagon. Four speed or three speed? Four. Four speed. I just bought a station wagon here, a real slick 65 Chevelle. Maybe I'll trade that one. The Edsel that I was looking at is gone, but he got a real slick blue 63 Impala. That's a lot better and a lot more valuable. I'd like to see what he wants to do, and we'll make a trade if we can. I'm not sure what he wants yet. He doesn't play. If he's hitting me again, he's serious. Ted was tight yesterday. As the weekend goes, he starts to spend a little more money. He's got a little four-speed wagon here with air. Probably about the best thing I'd be interested in. What are we going to do on the wagon? I know you're into the Impala. But I also like this. I just got it. But I think, in all honesty, I think they're probably worth about the same thing. Maybe you ought to give me a little money this time, because I'm sort of kind of going backwards. I just got it. Ted, I have new bumpers, and you need bumpers, and you're going to have to pay me a little bit. I think the Chevelle and his Impala are worth pretty darn close to exactly the same. The Impala might be worth a tad more, but I just got that uh, four-speed Chevelle, so we'll see. I believe he's interested in my car. He's been on me pretty hard today, so I guess we'll do something. If I can get a little more money from Ted, make the deal right. Let's get deal done. Come on. Swap me even. 1500 in a wagon, and we're done. It's not fair. Ted. Hold my hand. 1,200, let's get it done. That's meeting in the middle. It is. It's done deal. Done deal. Thank you. I good appreciate it. Did you drive that car yet? Runs good. Is it all right? Yeah, I'm happy with the deal. Ted to treat you right. It just takes a while to trade. It's been two days. He just didn't like the Edsel. I got a little of his money, and I got a car I can take home and maybe do a little tinkering with and make some money off of. Probably put some new paint on it, some new wheels. Maybe trade it back to Ted. You never know. Finally, after two days, I made a deal with Troy. Now, this is a four-day event. I intend on trading until the very last minute. And on the last day, people get real serious. They start realizing that their stuff is only worth what it's worth not what they're asking. So it'll be good, it'll be good right till the very end. I love Daytona. And I'm about to meet Butch Patrick, Eddie Munster. He's done a lot of film work, he's acted, he's traveled the world, but he's always gonna be known as Eddie Munster. The show is even still on TV. Man, I have a Munster mobile, so I am psyched. Really, really psyched. I want to look at that. That's well, spectacular. Man. Everybody has a coffin car, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> my first car was a 69 Mach 1. Had a lot of muscle cars through my years, and now I'm the proud owner of these uh, tribute cars of the Munster Coach and Dragula. I got my own coffin car, as you can see. The, these are Dragula? This is a tribute car. Surprisingly, how many there are floating around, but the ones that are actually Barris official emblemed, there's only a couple. And then over here, I have the tribute coach, and these were built by a gentleman named Rucker Posey in uh, Richmond, Virginia that I uh, worked with for the last five years, and he retired last year, so I wound up buying them. Street legal, registered. I, I love these cars. I have one. I have the, a Gary Powers car. Well, you know, the Munsters, it was cool because it was the first hot rods on television, inspired a whole generation. George Barris built the yeah. originals. Uncle George, I knew him for 50 yeah, years. Very sweet man. He was like family to me, and he took me in, and he let me be a little boy and go down to the shop and see Sonny and Cher and Elvis and, and for Sinatra picking up their customs. Wow. Yeah, it was really a cool experience. Wow. It was a good experience. This is remarkable. Yeah. So you just acquired this? recently? I got this last February, and I went on the road, and this year what we're going to do is a Route 66 tour to celebrate 50 years of the Munsters. You haven't changed a whole hell of a lot. Yeah, a <laughs> little less hair, a little less hair. Let's not do any hair. <laughs> yeah, there you go. What he's got here today, these Munster Mobile, the Dragula, it's just so nice. Everything is perfect. And this guy knows how to do this. It's what he does. I am so lucky to have been on a show that not only endures as a TV show, but also has hot rods involved. So I have this really neat Americana foothold. And it's your passion. It's not work. And as people say, do you ever get tired of doing it? And I said, if I got tired of doing it, I wouldn't be here. I yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, man. I'm going to come and, down and visit you. you. I would love that. We'll, I'll we'll give you compare my car. cars. Yeah, there's no comparison. Your cars. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. It was really nice reminiscing and talking with Butch Patrick, Eddie Munster. It was great. What a nice man. I had a blast. Some people make it fun. He's one of them. I love Daytona, you never know who you're gonna meet. And I ran into the Graham brothers. We both like the same kind of cars, both in the same business, and they're very sharp. When I ran into them, they were looking at a Corvair, which I never thought they would look at. That Corvair had an LS3 motor in it, which is crazy, but the car wasn't finished either. The interior wasn't together. That's not a car for us. Brian, you like to take chances. Is this a car you take a chance on? If it were done, I would say take the chance, but the, you know, having to finish it. It was done it. and you could buy it right. Right. Brian and Jay are definitely a contrast. Brian likes to take chances. Brian will swing for the fences. Jay is more or less a 
plug in straight ahead kind of a guy. You think maybe I can tag along with you, maybe catch some of this Volo magic you have? Absolutely, we're going this way. Come on. I've never been to this Daytona show and walking around with Ted, it's interesting getting his perspective on things. We're walking along and we bump into a blue GS stage one convertible. Too good to be true. Four speed, air conditioned, great colors, great options. Is it a real car? No, it's supposed to be a stage one. If it's a stage one, it's an 80 grand car. Can you run the VIN and find out? The VIN number tells you it's a GS, but it doesn't tell you if it's a stage one. Now, the thing is, there is only 81 stage one four-speed convertibles built. So if it is the real deal, it's an extremely rare car. I got a feeling that this guy is smart enough to know that his car is a clone. That's why the price is the way it is. That's what I say, but Brian's shooting for that home run again. But the thing is, but he's got know, nothing to lose. Even if it's not one, it's still worth that kind Exactly, of he's got nothing to lose. Right, right. right. that's what he lose. says, right. but it's, it's a waste of our time then. Well, and... from 32 grand and buy yeah. the car. That's the number, isn't it? Yeah. They're not taking a chance at 32 grand. They can't get hurt. If it's a stage one, they hit a home run. We all wanted the car. Ted was gracious enough to, to let me have it. We ended up striking a deal and bought it. You know, if this car turns out to be a real stage one convertible four speed, if it turns out to be legit, it's a $150,000 car uh, all day long. If it doesn't, well, we'll put it up at 49.9 and still make a good buck. I don't mind making a car deal on my vacation. That's what I do. I actually sold my doctor a car while he was delivering our first child. So there's never a bad time for a car deal. This guy Michael came by. He said he's in the water slide business and he plays with cars and he wants my Jeep. It's a 61, it's a 56 year old Jeep. It's pretty darn nice. He said he's got some cars to trade. I'm here to trade. What have you got? I got four cars left. I'd like to uh, not trailer them back. Well, I don't want to bring any of mine home. I don't need four, but if the deal's right, I'll do it. Where are your cars at? Car Corral. All right, let's go look. OK, let's go. Ted and I are in negotiation right now. I came down to South Florida with uh, a dozen cars. I'm hoping maybe Ted will take uh, a couple more of my cars off my hand, a couple of the classics that I have. You know, I have another Honda Insight. Might sweeten the deal that way. The first one of the cars is a 73 Mach 1 that runs good but needs to be restored. The other one is a Plymouth Valiant. A little six-banger, cute car. Slant 6 is bulletproof. Great. And the other two insights. Marcus and Lucy are trying to get me to the 21st century, and these are hybrid, electric, and gas, and it just isn't what I sell. So if I'm not in them right, I'm not making the deal. So I've seen your cars. Yep. I think you got four left. I'm thinking we throw keys, four cars, you take the one ready car, and we're good. I think you dehydrated. Sun's been beating on you too much. We need a bigger hat. Come on, man. Keep you shaded. One car for four cars with all good bones, a good platform to start from. The two hybrids are ready to jump in and drive. Uh, you know, let me be fair, OK? I want 14 for my car, OK? The Valiant is a six banger. It's worth two grand. The Mach 1 is worth four. That's six grand. These two, I mean, in my world, two, three grand a piece, that's six. That's 10 grand. I think it's a fair trade. I'm going to eke out a profit if I can, but I think that's fair. And you don't really want to bring four more cars home. You get two green cars, environmentally safe, 70 miles to a gallon. Four cars, four grand. I know that you are in the water slide business. You're in the amusement parks all the time. But I think the water park, you get a little water on your brain, I think. Let's finish. Shake my hand, be done. This is not the Constitution. Come on, Listen, let's go. I'm not shaking your hand for four cars to one. I'm giving you a hug. Four for one, that's hug material. Good, done. Done? OK. <laughs> Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. I'm very happy with the deal that I just finished up with Ted. I got one Jeep. I don't have to take four cars back. It was a great deal for me. He wanted four grand, and I was at straight flipping keys, and I did not budge, and he sold me the cars. I got people all over the yellow Mustang already, so I'm really excited about it. I should be fine. End of the show, I still have the Aztec. I'm on a mission. My buddy Dan has a 98 GT Mustang convertible. Yeah. They're easy to sell. I want to bring something different home. I'll swap them if he's willing. Danny boy. Ted, this is you? It's ugly. How you been, my man? I ain't I'm seen good, you in a long time. I've known Ted for 30 years. Ted's always looking 
to trade, but now maybe he's a little more desperate because this is an ugly duckling. He's asking 55 and I'm 45, but I mean, you know, those are trading prices and negotiating prices. I'm down to like my last couple of cars and this is really ugly and I don't want to bring it home. All I've got really left in the this price to range. To trade. To trade, okay, plus a little boot because there's no way. What you got without got the preamble? I've got a nice, nice 98 Mustang, GT convertible, Cold air, it's red, new rubber. 4.6? Yeah, 4.6, runs great. I, you can drive it home. With you and I, it don't take more than five minutes to do a deal, yeah, so let's finish this. Yeah, and the numbers this. on the window we mean nothing with you and me. Here's the deal. All right, let's just cut to the chase. The way this deal is gonna work is if we throw keys and just do an even trade. That's fair. I don't know who's winning, but it's a different car to bring home. I'll swap titles with you. Even trade, done. Uh, I can't That's do as that. as much as I'll do. Oh, man. No, I get a pass. Let's just shake hands and be done with it. I've done too many deals for you to beat this up. Is the air brand. cold in it? Air's ice cold and drives good. I've driven it home a few times. You got the title? <laughs> you know better than that. Okay, you drive it to the spot. You drive it to my spot and I'll do business, but I'm not letting my friend see. Yes, sir. Thank Done you, deal. brother. I love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I, I knew I was going to wind up throwing keys. You know, getting money out of him is like pulling teeth, okay? I'm not fond of 98 Mustangs. They're a dime a dozen but I really hate the Aztec. The Daytona was great as usual. I brought 12 cars here. I'm coming home with 20 new ones. I got four cars for my 61 Jeep, which I think was insane. I traded a soccer mom van for a Porsche. It doesn't get better than that. And the highlight was the last deal in the end of the day, getting rid of my ugly duckling. My Aztec is gone, thank God. Bunches and bunches of new stuff and got rid of a lot of old stuff. Daytona was great and I will surely be back every time. There I am driving back to Miami in a hybrid. Me, Ted Vernon in a hybrid. Now, if I find myself listening to Taylor Swift on the way home, I'm really gonna get worried. This 21st century thing is getting to me. Change is good. Not change isn't good. I'm gonna listen to doo-wop music all the way home. I'm gonna sing myself, rock and roll, and I'm getting out of here. I'm not listening to change. Change this.